Hey, we got a great show for you today. Before we get to it, I want to remind you, there's only a few days left to get the ultimate draft kit at pre-order pricing. All of our award-winning rankings, 100-plus player profile videos, expert picks and projections, and new custom scoring support and a new mobile UDK app. So hot! It is, it's pretty hot, Jason. It's unbelievable. You can get it all right now at pre-order pricing. few days left, ultimatedraftkit.com. This is Jess from Sacramento. My fantasy team is Belichick Hobo Power, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Got a great show for you. The month of May is closing down. It's Tuesday. It's May 28th. It's almost June. It's it's here. It's you, here. You it's heard UDK it in the week. intro. The Ultimate Draft Kit comes out June 1st. Four days left to get that lowest price. Very excited. You've got uh, a lot of work has been done to produce the Ultimate Draft Kit. Very, very excited to get it into your hands, both on the web and on your mobile devices. Uh, Very excited for the Foot Clan to get into it. It's been uh, a tool and a resource for the last four years that has uh, tremendously, from your feedbacks, it's helped you win your draft. Your league doesn't stand a chance. That's what I'm trying to say. No chance. Zero percentage got. chance. I just feel like color is coming back to my body as the blood that was drained over the last several months putting this thing together is like it's, uh, you know, we, we're, we're looking at this thing. We're you, seeing it. We're seeing the app. We're seeing the, the, the newer, faster, more, you mm-hmm. know, custom scoring and all the stuff in there. It is hundreds of blurbs. Have you thought about not putting leeches on your legs? Well, that's part of the UDK process, Mike. Yes. Don't be an idiot. Trust the process. You Trust are right. The process. You the process. are right. UltimateDraftKit.com. Pre-order before June 1st. Follow us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers for all the latest and greatest from the fantasy footballers. Today we have uh, some news we're going to talk about in the fantasy football world. We're going to get into this or that. Mm-hmm. Okay? Some ADP picks. So we'll be looking at players going very close to one another in the mock drafts as of May 28th and deciding which one we prefer, debating, discussing, talking about that on today's show. If we have time, we'll get to some mailbag, some of your questions. Uh, You just heard another Foot Clan member introduce the show. What was that, Belichick's Hobos? Is that the name of it? (laughs) The Power. Oh, okay. Yeah, look, if there's one thing Belichick knows how to do, it's put people out on the street once they're of no use to him. Whether it was Wes Welker... You know, any of these, if you're no, if you're no good anymore, be gone with you. Mm-hmm. See you later. If you're suspended for four games, though, come on board, Benjamin Watson. Hey. Nah, oh, I'm just kidding. On. We'll talk about that as well. But I do want to get into the quick question of the day. Little this or that with some Bengals wide receivers. Which Bengal wide receiver would you prefer at their current average draft position. So right now, you can draft A.J. Green in the early third round. That's about where he'll go. You can draft Tyler Boyd in the early sixth round. We're talking about a half point per reception. The Foot Clan has weighed in on Mm. this one. 3,000 plus votes on Twitter at the FF Ballers. How do you weigh in? Who would you go with there? Boyd in the sixth, Green in the third. So... Here's here's my thought. So AJ Green is falling, and 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 you understand it. He's a little bit older. He's dealt with injuries the last two years, missed a couple games. He's got a foot problem that'll probably linger the rest of his career. But he can you know in, in, play through it. It's not to say he can't play 16 games. Where he's going right now in the third round is a value. I mean, if he plays 16, you're going to capitalize on that. He was great last year when he was on the field, but. The way that I see these two players is that they're both higher risk I, because I think I think A.J. Green is the risk for the Bengals. 
you know, Tyler Boyd was much better with A.J. Green on the field last year than without. It wasn't, you know, a lot of people think Tyler Boyd's explosion onto the scene was because A.J. Green missed games. That's not in any way, shape, or form true. And so the risk is inherent to both of these players, A.J. Green and Tyler Boyd. So I feel like I would rather take the lower cost risk because if I'm being honest, I recognize the value that you could end up getting in A.J. Green, and he's like off my board. I can't imagine drafting A.J. Green personally because I just think, you know, all of these players, they get to a certain point. Demarius Thomas. Demarius Thomas is just, he was. That's a tough thing to say, though, because Green's at the same stage of his career as Julio Jones is. And. I understand the concerns. Now, both guys are, are contract year players as well, A.J. Green and, and Tyler Boyd. It's a tough discussion because my default answer was the same as yours. It was Boyd. Mine's but, Green. But Easy. Green's, Green, Easy. Can, Green can go 1,310, and I don't think that Boyd can go 1,310. Right, 100%. Yeah, I totally agree. And Look, I've my love for Tyler Bo- Boyd has been proclaimed on this podcast. I think he – broke out for real this wasn't just a one-time thing I think Boyd is a good wide receiver and he's in a a good position AJ Green it was a top tier wide receiver before going down in week eight and in round three a player who has top five upside at the position that's where I'm gonna go I don't blame you Jason that he's off of your your draft board because of the injury risk but i the way I play, I'm all for taking that risk, especially so, in the third round. So it, is this the same refrain, though? Because I'm on a counterpoint for a moment. Is this the same refrain that we're going to be uh, bringing up over and over again about A.J. Green for the next couple of years before we give up on it? You know, 2016, 964 yards, 10 games played. 2017, 1,078 yards in 16 games, disappointing season. 2018, nine games played, 694 yards. It's been a while. That's right? the that's sure. the story. Like for someone like Julio Jones at the same age, it hasn't been a while. He leads the league in yardage nearly every year. Yeah, and it's it's been a while for a complete season. I mean, I would say that where where was AJ Green drafted last year? Right around the back of the second. Yeah. So for a back of the second, yeah, it was disappointing that you didn't get a full season. But you got through week eight and in half point PPR. He was the wide receiver seven. You give me eight weeks of the wide receiver seven production, I would st- I would still take that from a third round draft versus pick. what you got year round from boy. Yeah. Okay. I, I, and then I'll re- a good and then debate. I'll, and then I'll figure discussion. out how to replace it. Sure. I mean, but I, that's it, I mean that's a hot start. In you the, like hot starts? <laughs> it's it's great. I do like starting hot and I, hot finishes. And the hot middles. <laughs> Mid- starts, middles, ends. If I had to pick one in the draft season, it would definitely be I would prefer to have a hot start uh, than to draft a guy who's going to be really good in, in eight weeks. Um, but I just think in the third round, there are other really valuable options. I would rather take Zach Ertz. You know what I mean? Like than someone that I think That's if, a, if you want to I mean, Even pivot, saying that out loud is, I would take green. is kind of interesting. That the, tells me that you are – buying into the fact that he has not been able to do it over a long period of time for four years now. Right. He he hasn't been on the field consistently for the last little Wait, while. What, two years ago, he was 1,008. That's the not last... good enough for, for that play. For a third-round pick? Correct. Not, well, wow. Okay. Correct. We live in different worlds. Well, when you – it's what Boyd gave you last year, right? Yeah. Okay. In so the sixth. I, look, it's not good enough for – if you draft him in the third and you get 1,008, you're probably – you're disappointed. You're probably okay because eight touchdowns is, is nice. I am very okay with that. But it's not the ce- – like, Boyd doesn't have the ceiling that Green has had in the past. It begs another question, though, and we don't have time to discuss it all right now. we got news. we got this and that. But we should talk about great players that are transitioning into new offenses because someone like Devontae Adams, right, who we've talked a lot about, he's very high on our boards, but – you know, he's going to be in this offense that the, there's a general presumption that he's just going to be great again, which is probably true, but he's going to be playing in the slot, right? He's going to be playing a lot more in the slot than he's done in the past. There's transitions here. It, Green's going to experience it too, is my point. Green's going to experience a change in the offense. Um, so it might be interesting to kind of look at at least a handful of those in more detail on what we expect because, look, when you have a season like Devontae Adams has had, 
you really don't you can't go up so you can move laterally though you can, you and can i would accept the lateral movement yes lateral movement is easier with less variables and a new offense can represent a variable that's all i'm saying i'm yeah, not projecting sure. it i'm saying that there more variables in fantasy football means more risk more risk means uh you know less consistency for your team so we'll get into the uh i'm sure we'll talk about that a lot as as training camp comes along i only brought it up because i saw that uh matt lafleur said the offense is picking it up the players are picking it up faster than he expected <laughs> what is what is uh, that, unlike what lamar that jackson say? who what, doesn't did not right. know what was happening but what does that say about matt lafleur and his uh, Vaunted. Fart sniffing of his own offense. Right. Like he comes in, my offense is so incredibly difficult to understand. I cannot believe these peons could well, understand like, my it, offense. It, maybe it's just maybe it's just his thought of the players. Like, oh, I thought you guys were <laughs> idiots. It's, it's the one only, or the other. The only farts worth sniffing are Sean McVay's. For to be clear. Oh yeah, That's true. yes. He can sniff as many of his own, <laughs> and I probably sniff them too. Let's okay. get into the news. Sniff them together. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. All right, Ben Watson. Ben Watson was suspended four games for violating the performance-enhancing drug policy. Uh, the Patriots were aware of this suspension before they signed him. Watson basically broke the news on Facebook. He took uh, performance enhancers, which was some testosterone, after retiring, thinking he wasn't going to come back, but he was still on the schedule for the regular drug tests. Yeah, and it's not it's not you know like he was taking steroids. It was he he had a doctor prescribed testosterone booster after he thought he was gone, and and those he knew those were banned, but he didn't think he was coming back to right. If he if you're not playing in the NFL, yeah, he was <laughs> taking things that me and you could go right now and take. To, Hold on, I but need that, to take yeah. a note. <laughs> make a doctor's appointment. We, I'll, I'll say this: we don't get we ben don't Watson. make. I mean, we don't make that excuse for you know. Any other player caught doing that? It was just an unfortunate circumstance. He thought he was retired. Right. Um, those are performance enhancers. I mean, yeah. they're recovery enhancers. They're um, strength and conditioning enhancers. So that means he's going to be real good in so week five. He's going to be great in week five. No, <laughs> but Austin Sverian Jenkins, Matt Lacoste, they'll be the primary tight ends for it's the first at least couple an, weeks. It's an opportunity for Sverian Jenkins. All right, more fire on the Todd Gurley discussions. I read into this. Some might not, but Jay Glazer on NFL Network, uh, he said, no, it's not overblown. Speaking of Gurley's knee, says the biggest test will come early in the offseason. Um, early in the season. Sorry, early in the season. Uh, they, they're they going to try to use him as a workhorse. There's a lot of concerns. They will go away if he doesn't have a knee that swells up, but that is a concern, and he's that knee has gone through a lot since college, and they have to brace for it swelling up again, which they did by investing high draft capital on Daryl Henderson. So... The Gurley, like, I just, Gurley will be a potential value in drafts. That that will not change. That will automatically right. be the case, barring season-ending surgery, some news, some injury in preseason. He will be a possible value because he will drop, because he belongs at number one if he's a workhorse. Right. So no matter what, he's a possible value because he could be number one. But I don't, like, I find myself not wanting to, and we, we saw this in our mock draft, I just don't want to play the game very much. Like, I... I don't know if I want my first pick to be the guy that I'm taking the risk on. It's why we have him ranked lower than the consensus and have had him there. So there are certain, I trust Jay Glazer to be telling the truth. Yeah. That's what I was going to bring up. There are certain <laughs> analysts that I trust more. You know, there are certain that they come out and they just want clicks on their blog or their website or, you know, and you know, they, and they just, you, they've got a big name, a big platform, so you give them credit. But Glazer, Glazer's a smart dude. He's well connected, and when he comes out and says stuff, even when he was making, he was you know, the he first the on the Odell Beckham Jr. Exactly, trade. That's what I was going to bring up, and he was he was right there. So, uh, I mean, it, obviously, it's not a lot of news to say. Well, they're going to they're going to use him as a workhorse unless his knee doesn't work. But the implication there is that they're, they're really for, worried yeah. about the knee. All right, so, Cleveland's hosting the 2021 NFL Draft. Wait, is that news, Brooks? Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was news. And then next, 2020 next year, is Vegas. Yeah, yeah next okay. year is Vegas. The year after that is Cleveland. Okay. Um, then Kansas City. No, Kansas City was, is 2023. Three. There, I can't remember the one that was in the middle of that. Okay. We'll, we'll let you know before it happens. 
<laughs> I just don't know why this is. Fa- it wouldn't it does not help your fantasy team. Where as long as there is a draft, you're in good shape as a fantasy owner. Jarek McKinnon is not practicing. He is not participating in OTAs. And he's got a. He's not been cleared with the knee injury. Matt Burita not practicing. Chest injury. Raheem Mostert not practicing. Arm injury. <laughs> If you wondered why the 49ers <laughs> gathered together as many running backs as they possibly could, this is why. Yeah, uh, and Tevin Coleman right now, some some people saying he's expected to be the lead guy. I don't know how much of that is just the fact that he's the only healthy human there at, at the right. position. Um, but it, That's it, just a, a one San Francisco beat writer predicts Coleman to receive the most touches. Right now. Right now. So Because he is. <laughs> But whoever gets the most – here's what's crazy. Like, whoever gets the most touches it's gonna, they're gonna will, be great. Be, will be a very good they're fantasy great. option. You can take you can take a shot yep. on some of these guys. Yeah, I'd go with uh, – go Coleman with right now. Matt Burita. You'd go with one pack? No, uh, yeah. One, one pack. One pack is fine. Uh, Kenny Galladay is not protect, uh, participating in team drills right now. Chest injury. Which Marvin is, Jones, knee, still not recovered, working on the side at OTAs. Yeah, it's really surprising that the chest injury that – yeah, it is. It seems like it's lingering. He he was dealing with this already, right? And yeah, so Galladay missed, dealt with it last year. Missed the last game of the season. That's crazy that it's not uh, done with. So something you very much want to monitor right now. Uh, Duke Johnson not showing up at off-season programs yet. Nothing mandatory. All right, Duke. Uh, otherwise, we're done with news. We'll get into this or that. Be sure to switch your Dynasty League to Sleeper. Once again, news and notes brought to you by the Sleeper app. Every day, becoming more and more preferred as a platform. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's get into it. I want to play a game. All right, it's simple. Choose between two players, same position, same ADP, that's average draft position, and then make your decision. We're starting off with Mike Evans, head-to-head against Adam Thielen, both are middle to late second round draft picks right now. Mike Evans, Adam Thielen. We uh, we can look at these two players and we can say they finished on very different ends of the fantasy spectrum last year. The last three weeks of the season, Evans went off. He was the wide receiver 10, wide receiver 9, wide receiver 3. The last three weeks for Adam Thielen, not so much. Wide receiver 74, 30, and 58 to finish out your fantasy season. Boy. With uh, a big, pooped in his big boy pants. Yeah. So, through the first eight weeks of last year, Thielen was wide receiver one. Evans was wide receiver nine. From weeks nine through 17, Thielen was the wide receiver 23. Evans was wide receiver 10. Who do you prefer? For uh, me, it's it's pretty easy. Uh, it's very easy for me as well. I don't know if we're on the same, <laughs> uh, the same player same or not. Train? But I'm going to take a guy who his entire career has been been great was drafted to be great is definitely the one on his team and has a team that looks like they're going to continue to pass the ball like crazy and that's Mike Evans three of the last five years he's been a wide receiver one he has a great offense in place and I love me a a terrible defense in place for fantasy that's the Bucks versus the Vikings who you know they want to run the ball and they want to play good defense maybe that doesn't work out it, it very well might not, and they've got great pass catching options. I love Adam Thielen, but if they succeed on defense and are winning games running the ball, and the pass volume isn't there, like I don't see how Mike Evans just has a super disappointing bust year. Evans is my pick as well. I have the biggest gap between these two. I have Evans at eleven, Thielen at sixteen. I've gotten some heat for the Thielen pick there. Um, but Evans is in an offense that's going to run a lot of plays under Bruce Arians. Now, there could be mistakes made, um, but those can be made by, you know, Kirk Cousins as well. It's not like of all the – it's not Drew Brees versus Jameis Winston in this situation. So I, I have Evans as a top 12 guy. For you guys, I have it, – it, this is really difficult for me because I have Adam Thielen one spot ahead of Mike Evans, and if I'm – Looking down that it, at an actual draft, I might take Thielen, I mean, the, the guy who I actually have ranked one spot higher, but I might go Evans. Do you have uh, – like last year he surpassed 1,500 yards. He's really never been close to that because his yards reception went through through the roof compared to the last two years. Talking about Evans? Yeah, talking yeah. About, thank you. Talking about Mike Evans, do you see the that – 
fourteen hundred yard as the most the the more likely range of outcomes for Evans, or do you think you're looking at something more like uh, like his rookie year, where he's just over a thousand? but then he's in the double-digit range of touchdowns. I certainly don't see him like I see T.Y. Hilton from a yardage perspective. I see him in the 1,100, 1,200 range. But not the 15 that he put up last Correct. year. Correct. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, three of his five years, he's been over 1,200 yards, so I see him as 1,200. Not, yeah, I, I agree, not necessarily last year, but I also think that, you know, more touchdowns could go his way. He, touchdowns aren't uh, easy to predict. They're not a sticky stat. Easier when you're as big as Mike Evans. Yes. Do For you sure. do you change your pick, Jason, in a full PPR league with the amount of targets and receptions that Adam Thielen represents? It, it becomes closer for sure because uh, Adam Thielen's a great PPR option. I still am confident that he is the number one read for the Vikings. But I have far more fear drafting Adam Thielen. Like when I draft Mike Evans, I don't think Mike Evans can be, you know, the, the – the number one, number two, number three wide receiver. There's a world where maybe Adam Thielen does that. He did that at the beginning of last year. But I'm scared of Adam Thielen. Like, what if the world is he's the number two for his team that's not throwing the ball a lot? Wow. I'm just saying worst case. Like, what's the worst case for Mike Evans? But it, just the fact that you – Worst case for Mike Evans is James Winston's is not the quarterback in three weeks because he's throwing so many interceptions into Bruce Arians' new offense and you've got a backup quarterback coming in that's not named Ryan Fitzpatrick. And then you've got a really, really bad situation you of have instability. Been so staunch and, I mean, I dare I say, aggressive in yes. your defense that Adam Thielen is the one for the team. And I if you don't it. think it, you're a well, dummy. You but now, you're, it, you now you're introducing fear to the people. Well, here's you're a, a fear monger. Uh, sure, I'm a fear monger. But the the reality is, while I believe he is the one, I am confident he's the one. I also recognize, like, I don't know the future, and there is a very equal talent across the field to him that led targets the last half of last year. So, I mean, you, you know, it's just a matter of amazing humility, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thanks. Wow. Nicely um, done. It's a close one. It, it is a close one. Yeah, I think but I based would. based on offensive I trajectory, the trajectory, you know, Tampa should be playing, uh, you know, last couple of years in Arizona, Bruce Arians, almost the most plays called per game on offense – whereas they're going the opposite direction and a little I, bit in Minnesota. I just love that. You know, it's funny. We had a conversation of, like, divisions. Do divisions matter? And we were thinking in context of, like, tough defenses. But I love having teams in a division of just fantastic offenses. Mm. You're going to be playing against the Saints. You're going to be playing against the Falcons, the the Panthers. Like, there's just going to be a lot of points scored. Yeah. Before we move into the next this or that, I want to thank today's sponsor, 23andMe. Father's Day is right around the corner, and 23andMe's Health Kit Plus Ancestry Kit is the perfect gift for a limited time. You get 50 bucks off the 23andMe Health Plus Ancestry Kit through June 17th. And, hey, if you buy a kit for yourself, too, you and Dad can connect. Look at these little well, genetic you, similarities. You, know, you figure out who, who your Papa Bear came from. That's and right. who his Papa Bear came from. Look, I, I've got the kit. The other two fellas on the show, yeah. we we have all done it. Yeah, they, my uh, DNA is better than yours. Uh, we should compare and make yeah. sure that that is false. Look, 23andMe, <laughs> they offer trait reports. They give insights into how genetics can affect uh, mosquito bite frequency, motion sickness, fear of heights, more. Dad can explore where his DNA is from, from over 1,000 regions worldwide. And this Father's Day, get that $50 off of 23andMe's health kit plus ancestry kit at 23andMe.com slash footballers. That's the number, 23andMe.com slash footballers. Again, that's 23andMe.com slash footballers. The offer ends June 17th. Oh, and Foot Clan, speaking of dad, oh. goodness gracious, the Father's Day gift extraordinaire Omaha Steaks is added again. People ask With, every year, when is this going to happen? It's now, And people. it's happening right now. It's now. You can get 74. It already happened in my house. <laughs> yes, I, I have mine as well. Nah, you can get 74% off gone in my belly. The, the Father's Day Steak Fix gift package. It's two hundred and thirty-five dollars worth of just meat. Omaha for and and don't forget the caramel apple tartlets. Oh Not just yes. meat for fifty-nine bucks. It is an awesome gift. Order now, you will get two tender filet mignons, two bold top sirloins, two savory pork chops, four Omaha steak burgers, four gourmet jumbo franks, four chicken fried steaks, all beef meatballs, four premium chicken breasts, four caramel apple tartlets that are so good. The packet of Omaha Steak Signature Seasoning mm. Pack and 
You'll get four extra Omaha Steak Burgers free. Order right now. Get the Omaha Steaks Father's Day Steak Fix Package valued at $235 for just $59. Go to omahasteaks.com. Search Fantasy into the search bar. That's not is not a coupon code. It's Fantasy right. into the search bar at omahasteaks.com. I'm grilling out tonight. I've been grilling a lot. Yeah. I got, I got my package. I got my grill set up. I heard. I think. I think I got invited over to eat at your house. I, I, I did not. It. I did not take advantage. Cool. Of I it. did too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Philip Lindsay or Mark Ingram. This or that. Philip Lindsay or Mark Ingram. Both, hey, yeah, both yeah, are yeah. middle fourth round picks. And that's the idea here, right? Like whenever we're doing the this or that, yeah, you can't get both. You're not. You, this is. You'll never have going, both. These guys are going right next to each other, and you have to decide because I don't want the last segment to be taken as like I don't like Adam Thielen. Right. Correct. I would love to have Adam Thielen, but if both are on the clock, I'm not going to get both. I got to decide. Well, and I'll, I'll say this too: you listen to us talk about the rankings, and we've got the rankings on the site, and the rankings in the Ultimate Draft Kit, and they're key. They're important. They uh, they're broken up by tiers, and you can examine them, and you can uh, memorize them for all I care. You know, you can know front to back exactly what the rankings say. But part of this show has been taking a holistic approach of fantasy football and saying your team in the middle of a draft is going to be different than somebody else's team in the middle of a draft for a couple reasons. One, the players that you drafted before the middle of the fourth round, they may dictate which direction you go between these this or that players. Also, the other teams in your league and what they've done with their team. So there is a lot of subjectivity in the middle of these drafts, and it's worth debating the merits of these players. And for me, it's Mark Ingram. Now, I I want to be clear because much like Jason said, I don't dislike Philip Lindsay. I do think Philip Lindsay has the potential for regression this season. Oh, and he I'm, will. And and the reason being, look, he ended the year, you, you might not remember because of how much fun it was to own him for the duration of the season. He was free, right? He was one of the best waiver wire pickups in the league. He dominated. He made Royce Freeman owners cry. Yes. And he was great. But Philip Lindsay's coming off an injury. He ended the year against two easy rushing defenses and flopped in both of them, hurting your fantasy playoffs. And Royce Freeman's healthy again. So I think there's a world where the love of Philip Lindsay pushes him too high in drafts. I want Mark Ingram. Uh, uh, I'm going to say his name again, Who? though. I don't know what I oh, said. Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram. Ingraham. Didn't we used to call him Ingraham? Ingraham and eggs. Something uh, like that. I want Mark Ingram. I think he's barely being talked about because I think he's boring to a lot of people. I think it's boring because fantasy football owners – Look at the Ravens' offense with a boring lens because they see Lamar, but then they see a bunch of players that maybe aren't going to help your fantasy team at the wide receiver core. And I think that he's safer. This is a team that's going to want to run the football. This is a team that has turned players like Alex Collins into fantasy superstars. And the Gus bus. And the Gus bus. That was a good ride. He's still there. Yeah. Um, but I think Mark Ingram is going to get the rock a ton. They don't pay running backs. They paid him. He came in. He's got juice. I just don't – I just feel like he's he's much safer at the position. Can I pass on both? Is that <laughs> You don't an, want either one. Is that an option? No, I – You've got Lindsey higher. Jason, you've got Lindsey higher. I'm the only one with Ingram. I got him one spot higher I, than Lindsey. Yeah. So I believe in Philip Lindsey. And, Andy, I'll be honest, you scare me in your Philip Lindsay takes because you were early to the Philip Lindsay train. You rode that. You, you've you been in tune with what – He got the, where he needed to go. Yeah. He, I he, traded him in Dynasty. Yeah, it, exactly. You've you've gotten out from under that now. You follow the Denver News cycle very well, and uh, you are you, – you say you don't hate Philip Lindsay, but I feel like I look at you based on where you were last year as a Philip Lindsay hater this year. I by, get it. By comparison to your bullishness. On the flip side, though, I believe he's a – really exceptional talent. This is a guy who's got sub 4-4 four, four speed. He didn't go to the combine, so he didn't get drafted. And uh, he did, uh, it's not that he didn't go. He wasn't invited. Sure, he wasn't invited. <laughs> I to like the, to he, like, he was actually outside. It's like sitting I, there. I didn't go to Jason's house for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the, Correct. The, you didn't go to that dinner, <laughs> did you? The, the reality is... The reality uh, is he broke into the NFL. He did something that he's a great player. nobody else has, no has done, being an None. undrafted guy getting 1,000 yards. You talk about the end of the season. It wasn't good for him. But there's 
there is such a thing as a rookie wall, and this is a smaller oh, he rookie, hit it. and he hit it hard. But coming in, I mean, think about it. He was on pace for over 1,200 yards. I think there's touchdown regression coming. But I believe he wins the job. I think he is a really good back with breakaway speed, and he's a good pass catcher. And Flacco has a you know is a check down machine. I don't he, think Mark Ingram. Good. When I compare these two players, I don't think Mark Ingram catches passes here. Agreed. By comparison to what Philip Lindsay sure. can and do, there, there that, will be other backs in Baltimore. You're right about that. But I don't think any of them are going to represent first and second down challenges the way Royce Freeman will to Philip Lindsay. Royce Freeman. Not to be underwhelmed or underwhelming in in hype this off season. This is a guy who ranks like fifth in college football history in total yardage. Who's mm -hmm. a high draft capital pick? I I'm more concerned Royce? about yeah Royce. I think he was seventh. Yes, okay. Whatever. So, How dare you? He's, he's somewhere <laughs> just, in the upper saying. echelon. And the thing is, is I just think there is there's going to be some frustration for Lindsay owners this year when Freeman steals a drive or two or a touchdown or two, and I'm trying to avoid well, that. Well, look, in general, uh, opposite of Mike, I, I do believe Philip Lindsay's a good ball player. I think he's a, <laughs> I think he's you know better than Royce, but the reality is I'm with Mike. If I'm on the clock and those two guys are there, there's a lot of play. Like I, I know I'm super bullish on Kenya Drake, but Kenya Drake's going behind both these guys, and I would take Kenya Drake one out of one times. <laughs> That's 100%. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> Thank you. I um, what? don't know what that means. Uh, you the, you would take Kenyon Drake. Got it. The uh, the question for this new uh, coaching staff in Denver is: Are they still going to try and force Devonte Booker onto the field? Please, because like to your point, Jason, if Phil Lindsay's a good pass catcher, Royce can Royce is okay there as well, but. Booker had 51 targets last year. Yeah, get that out of my life. I mean, I mean if we just stop with that insanity, then then Lindsay's going to be a lot safer. But it, I'm just I'm concerned with the new coaching staff. I'm concerned with the amount of big plays and I know it's it's a funny thing to be against those, but when when a running back comes in with a they're over 5 a carry, but you just you see when <laughs> Tiny runs and then a huge, huge run that just kind of offset things. That That's concerning to me. And again, these debates seem like you love one, you hate right. one. They're back, you know, back well, to no, back. No, no, no. I, I hate them both. So. No, that's fair. That's right. You don't like them. Thank you. Allen Robinson or Robbie Anderson. Yes. They are both seventh round picks right now. And uh, apparently, I am one of the lowest experts on the planet on Allen Robinson at the moment. Now, our editor, Kyle, discovered it, a vortex, what it, he called a vortex of, of information about is, these two players. This is good work. This is good, solid work. Allen Robinson, Robbie Anderson. Both players are six foot three. True. Both players will be 26 when the season starts. Mm -hmm. Both went to college in Pennsylvania. Ho. Oh. Both players have the same career touchdown rate. Both players have an eight had an eighteen point seven percent market share last year. Mm -hmm. uh, both players tied from weeks one through eight at wide receiver fifty six. Gross. Um, and uh, this is the best one. You would, yeah. you can't skip this one. They they have almost inverse names. <laughs> Allen Robinson, Robbie Anderson, spooky. Because yeah. cause, cause Robinson they, is Robbie and then Allen is Anderson. Are they even different people? <laughs> Have we ever it's seen the Jets play the Bears? No. It, yeah, Historically, I, no. There's a reason why there's no weight listed here because I'm guessing Allen Robinson's got 20 on Robbie Anderson. Yeah, there, it's funny because I don't, I don't, despite all those stats, I don't view these players as very similar. The, the real question here when you're on the clock and you're, Debating comes down to two young quarterbacks. Right. And what you believe in their future. Right? It plays a big part. It also, I think, in, in part is career arc for these guys. Robbie Anderson. Um, yet to break out. Yeah, I would say he's yet to break out. And I think Allen Robinson, like, he's flashed. R Robbie well, Anderson is flashed. Allen Robinson has had breakout seasons. Season. Season. Well, sure, and that's my, that's my problem with right. with Allen Robinson in general is I think when you buy Robinson, 
when you when you go out and you draft him, you are paying for some expectations that probably don't exist in his range of outcomes anymore. With the injuries that he suffered, uh, the magical season, as it were, was 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns with Blake Bortles. It made him a top 10 draft pick in fantasy drafts. Whereas, you know, I love Robbie Anderson. I love the value on him. Uh, he was the wide receiver four in the final four games of the season last year. I love Sam Darnold to have a step forward. Like if, it, if we were sitting at breakout picks at the quarterback position individually, like Darnold's in consideration for me. Okay. I think there's a great opportunity for Sam Darnold. Um, where do you guys weigh in here? I just have a big gap between them. I'd rather have Robbie Anderson yeah. and all that. I want all the Robbie Anderson upside. I, I I have a huge gap here. It's it's Robbie Anderson that would be the pick for me. What you were talking about, Andy, where he ended the season just on an absolute tear, and not just because I'm buying into that really small sample size. I'm buying into Sam Darnold as a good quarterback who, once he, I mean, he started off it was a bit shaky. Darnold definitely looked like a rookie out there. He was injured. He was able to then spend that time. Watching like Josh McCount learning about the NFL without having to learn with 300 pound men trying to rip your body into pieces. He was able to to learn from the game from there, and you saw a very large shift in the way that he handled the game. Where early on in the season, Robbie Anderson was a fantasy nothing because no no field stretching because Darnold would not throw the ball down the field, and then uh, Darnold maybe the, the game slowed down a bit. And Sam Darnold was just able to read the field a bit better. So having said that, it's Robbie Anderson for me between these two guys. But I do want to remind people, of, yeah, the Allen Robinson breakout was a while ago. But it's just kind of been this bad stretch of luck. Because 2017, it was an ACL tear on his first catch of the season. So that's an entire season completely gone from the history where we don't get to know what he was going to do. Last year was his first year with a new new head coach, a new offense, a very raw quarterback in Mitch Trubisky. And then I reminded you guys before the before we started the show, I said, guys, do you remember that in the playoffs, Allen Robinson went off for 10, 143, and 1? Because I did not remember that. I didn't remember it happening that way. And the game before that, he was at 85 yards. So it's – I don't – I think writing off Allen Robinson at this point would be a stupid thing to do is, is the point I'm, I wanted to make for Allen Robinson. I, he's not written off. He's not dead to me. I prefer Robbie Anderson. I'm surprised they go in the same place. I'm surprised they're going the same place in drafts. I would have expected Robinson to be higher and not – Based off the name Because he might represent – you know, value as well. Yeah, I, I, I expected the exact same. I thought Allen Robinson would always go ahead of Robbie Anderson, but people are down on Allen Robinson, and, and maybe that's maybe that provides they're that down value. and they're up on Robbie. Uh, maybe that provides value. You're on welcome. Allen Robinson. I think that the <laughs> I trust the Bears' offense far more than I trust the Jets' offense going into 2019. I think the Bears' offense is going to be very good. You don't trust Maggie. the B hole. I don't trust the B hole. I think it's going to be you know a slight improvement over last season, but I don't think. Sam Darnold's taking that huge leap forward this year. All that being said, if if we're talking about seventh round picks where there's not a lot of risk here, and I'm swinging for upside, Robbie Anderson I think could be the one. And if Sam Darnold takes that step forward, like I've got Allen Robinson two spots ahead in my rankings, but if I'm on the clock and I'm I'm looking at my wide receiver, you know, four here, and I'm thinking who can really break out and dominate, there's too many mouths to feed for me in Chicago. It's part of why I have Mitch Trubisky a little bit higher is That's because I think Trey Burton could be that, that second year. The same reason I don't like Robinson. Right. And it's because it, I don't think his skills define like they don't force you to Julio Jones him in the office. If he's not available, they will go other places. It, it reminds me of Alshon Jeffrey. I think Alshon Jeffrey for the Eagles, he's the number one. He's the number one wide receiver. But is there enough but they wink when they say it. Yeah, well, because it's like, well, you've got Zach Ertz. You've got you know all these other guys. That's how I see Allen Robinson. So I would go Robbie Anderson if I'm on the clock in the seventh round as well. Sam Darnold's just 21. And I wonder if we were a few games away from his Baker second half. Because he ended Could the be. year you know, against Houston, number three on the week. Against right. Green Bay, number seven on the week. Two of the last three games of the season. I wonder if we were a few few weeks away from seeing. Hope uh, so. And they, you know, 
it, it's going to come down to the same thing that you guys bring up about Lev Bell a little bit, the offensive line. They added a simile from, from Oakland. You hope that their offensive line it makes an improvement both for Lev's sake and for Darnold's sake because, you know, he is mistake prone. He's a fumbler. He's, he's had issues right. from going back to college. Um, it'll be interesting. Let's do one more. All right. Sound good? Sounds great. Um, <laughs> Dak Preska. Yes. Or Mitch Trubisky. Just talked about Mitch. Apparently, Jason is the highest rated on Mitch Trubisky here in the office. Mm. Jason, how dare you? Kyle, our editor, wants to know, Jason, was can we go the classic long con? Can we go to the highlight, Brooks? Do we have that available to pull up the, uh, the now think, infamous uh, Jason Mitch I, Trubisky rant? I believe motivational speech <laughs> was uh, more accurate and correct. Um, and, and, you know. That's what matters is, is okay. So you've motivated him, and now you are bought in to Mitch Trubisky, who you can go take. It's it's not the wisest thing to always take snapshots, but you can take snapshots of Mitch Trubisky's season, where he looks like the an absolute up and coming elite NFL quarterback, mm -hmm. and you can take snapshots of it that make it seem as though finger painting he should <laughs> he should be put on the bench and never allowed on a field again 100 percent. i mean i and, and this is why i said and i still agree that mitchell trubisky is not going to be a great franchise quarterback but you don't have to be a great fran franchise quarterback to be a good fantasy asset and i think matt nagy the to me they have replaced jordan howard with someone that is going to help mitchell trubisky so much because they brought in a pass catching first and second down back in David Mopportunity, the new rookie coming in. And and if that opens things up, if they're able to use that that pass catching back the way the Andy Reid system, which is where Matt Nagy is from, you know, and they're able to open up more for Mitchell Trubisky, you've got a baseline with him running. You've got great weapons, I believe, there. Tariq Cohen out of the backfield can catch. David Montgomery can catch. Allen Robinson could catch. Trey Burton can move around and catch. And and Anthony Miller is a really good option. So, to me, the I'm buying Trubisky because I'm buying the Bears' offense. I really like both of these guys. If you're talking about a super flex league where you're in the late double-digit rounds, these are, the two, these are two of the guys I'm looking at most. But if I'm on the clock and I've got to pick one, I think Dak is safer. I think Mitch's ceiling is higher. Dak, to me, is a back-end quarterback one. He do, he's not gonna have. He's not gonna go out there and throw for forty six hundred yards and thirty touchdowns. That's just not. That's just not Dak. And I right. think M Mitch could end up with an offensive explosion. Can I go back to Mike's answer from the Ingram question? Sure. Can I choose neither <laughs> guy? Look, I I probably would go with Dak. That's how I have him ranked right now, just to kind of maybe take him with my last pick and see if what happened in the last half of the season with Amari Cooper is the real Dak now. I mean, I think I want to know that. I think the inconsistency of Trubisky is something that I don't really want to dance with. Uh, but it's nice that, you know, if he can run and continue to run and get help from Montgomery, that will be a feather in the consistency cap for Mitch. What do you think, Mike? I'm taking Dak. Uh, I'll take the guy who's never finished outside of the quarterback. One range, even though sometimes it's not the prettiest – to get there the question for Dak is like what do you guys read into over the last few games where with and then Amari Cooper's on the team and Dak Prescott basically stopped running which has been strange when you have an entire career's worth of Dak not that he's he doesn't run like Cam Newton but he's an incredibly mobile guy who do you want to run you want you want Zeke to run for him or do you want him to run? Because I think Zeke's increase of utilization in the passing game has something to do with that too. Right. It, was that it? Because we know that as soon as Amari Cooper joined the team, the targets for Zeke actually went up. So perhaps instead of the, uh, these plays where Dak has to scramble, they're calling smarter plays and having Zeke as an actual release valve. Yeah, I mean, par part of it is the, the need to run, right? He had less need to run when he could stand in the pocket – when Amari Cooper is there and he, you know, sure. he, the, the first half of last year and, and really seasons prior as well, he's needed to run. There, have, there haven't been always uh, guys open making separations. So, I, you know, I think you'll see less rushing but more uh, passing efficiency, which generally speaking 
is bad for fantasy football, which is dumb. Mike, what is the percentage chance that you have for Mitch Trubisky taking another step forward this year? As far as mm. consistency, as See, far I, as an, I, an I, NFL quarterback, I, th I think I've seen in some non-fantasy related um, – power rankings of the quarterback position he he ends up right in the middle of the pack right Fif like a 15 16 guy i have to rethink because i thought you were trying to bait a 55 out of me oh i thought sorry. i didn't realize you were asking a legitimate question so the percentage <laughs> nobody listens to the real questions <laughs> so the percentage chance that mitch takes the next step that's the question well it just just improves so takes much. A step do you forward. see the same thing as last year coming from him or do you see an improvement from mitch because i think chicago it's kind of like los angeles with golf you know do you have the guy that's going to get you a title? I think most people think Goff could get you a title in Los Angeles. Can Mitch, can Mitch take the next step? Because I think you need a better Mitch Trubisky to get to the Super Bowl in Chicago. Sure. I would say you have a better than 50% chance that he improves. Cause better than 50? <sighs> Just slightly? <laughs> I can't believe he said that. Like what Look, percentage chance would I'll, you say hypothetically? Like Probably like a 57 eh. It seems too high. high. It's a little too high. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. But no, he. You have to also remember there. Trubisky was injured over the, the final parts of the season, and it was his throwing shoulder. So it, yeah, I think based off of what he did, I would have to lean that he will improve. Yeah. Another year in the offense. Another year with Matt Nagy. Another year with some better weapons that fit Nagy's system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maturing Anthony Miller. He could make a big step. Another reason why. Robinson's a little bit of a – I give him a sideways glance there. And Calvin sure. Ridley and Taylor Gabriel, I mean, there there are – Calvin good. Ridley's on the Bears Did they now? trade him? Or <laughs> Riley? Riley Ridley. Riley Ridley. <laughs> uh, you can't make a mistake on this show, Jay. It's too dangerous. Pristine deal of the day. <laughs> this is real, Brooks? Tyler Boyd. Oh, is yeah. this real? He's not getting respect in the auction game, apparently. A signed Cincinnati Bengals, Tyler Boyd. Logo football, what? $35 <laughs> at pristineauction.com. This is the benefit of hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Uh, uh, pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS when you sign up and you get 5 bucks. Make sure you put it in the box that says registration code. You get $5 towards a future auction. And, uh, yeah, there's no better place to go. You guys ready to wrap? Yes. Come back. Join us on Thursday. Hey, make sure you you get that Ultimate Draft Kit for the pre-order pricing, ultimatedraftkit.com, and we will see you on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. Hey, Foot Clan, don't forget, this Father's Day, give Dad a gift packed with the Omaha Steaks he craves. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code FANTASY in the search bar for 74% off the Father's Day Steak Fix gift package. That is a $235 value, now just $59.99. This offer ends soon. Go to omahasteaks.com, type FANTASY in the search bar to get the Father's Day Steak Fix package today. Sounds pretty good.